sort of, in their clinical trials, and different aspects of activities. The charity has been one of the hearts in improving care, improving the clinical muscle centers, and driving services forward. And that work has occurred, goes forward today. One of the things we're doing this, with this opportunity now is to reflect a little on where we've come from, highlight the challenges we're facing, and then look at some of the, some of the progress we're making. But I think it's fair to say that, as we've heard, we're making real progress in our fight. But the backdrop is not easy, is it? There's an economic crisis taking place, and this arguably is one of the harshest times for all organisations, let alone all charities, that we've seen for many, many times. So there's pressure on the charity income. What we've done, we've had to reduce costs, make savings, have no expect, but also look to be more productive, to increase productivity and get more out of the investment we're making in these vital services. And I think that's the right and responsible thing to do. But while we've been doing that, we've tried to develop ourselves, to be true to ourselves, as an open and listening charity. And we've heard this morning, haven't we, how in research we're engaging people living with muscular dystrophy to talk MD online, in branch meetings, in group meetings, in the muscle groups, all the time establishing the charity as the voice of people just like yourselves here. There is no us and them in this charity who are open and listening. And part of what I hope you will do today is to question both myself and directors, trustees, to take the opportunity to let us have your views, your comments, and yes, your complaints as we're keen to improve what we do. And my next and last point on the slide on the screen says that we are in this together. I think Jane used the phrase, um, together we're stronger. And you know, when I think about our, our board of trustees, I think this charity is very fortunate indeed to have the strength of the board of trustees that we've got. Not least with Bill and the trustees here today, Baron Singer, Thomas Colby Willis, but other trustees within a first class board who rightly hold me to account and the senior team to account on your behalf. And I think any other charity would be extraordinarily, I think it's not extraordinarily fortunate to have the board and the support that we have got. And if I to try to describe in a, a couple of words the kind of organisation I want us to be, I think we've heard today that we are getting there, we are already there. We are focused on making a difference, we're caring to put people first, and we're determined, determined to win the battles we're fighting. If I can follow James' thinking, I'm speaking AM after Bayo, AH after Emelou, and AJ after Jane. You can see why I feel very fortunate to be the chief executive with powerful voices and advocates that I've heard today. I spoke about <coughs> improving our productivity, or here's some examples, and we're supporting more and more people, increasing the number of people we're in touch with and reaching out to uh, week by week, month by month. More publications, more fact sheets, more information on the website and more online services too. And you've heard about the impact of the advocacy service. And maybe the advocacy service is the wrong day. Maybe it should be the rights service, or the human rights service, or the entitlement service. We call it advocacy. What it's about is about defeating discrimination, defeating ignorance, making sure that you have support for the services and the uh, battles that you're fighting, the services you need the battles you're fighting. I've highlighted here too the support from the care advisors. What a fantastic job each care advisor does. Now we have 31 all NHS funding, so we're reaching out to more and more people and more families. And there's one further change coming up that I really am keen to highlight, and that's about the Neuromuscular Centre in Cheshire. The NFC is a great success story. You can see some of the statistics here for our impact report. 360 service users. 16 members of staff with muscular dystrophy, over 8,000 physio treatments, 20 students last year gained quality patients. What a fantastic service. But you know, what are those like that? Uh, this charity, the Muscular Dystrophy Campaign, <coughs> stepped forward something like 15, 16 years ago. The MC had some difficulties. And when the funding crisis came, the MDC stepped in to take the NMC forward. And it's been a huge success. And the photograph there, maybe you know, Matthew Lallon, does a brilliant job moving that service forward. So much so that from April next year, the NMC, like a teenager, becomes an adult and becomes an independent service. Supported by us, one of our close partners, 
with four little girls at Strength for Strength. As James said, we're supporting the work of other NMCs in different parts of the country. I put my 50p to say that the West Midlands will be the next leader for the NMC type service. And we'll support that. But fighting for independence takes different forms, isn't it? So the Joseph Patrick Trust, 25th anniversary in March of this year, 6,000 people supported by 6 million pounds of grants for the JPT. So a warm thanks to the Patrick family for their support for the JPT. And also to David Jacks, all these here today, who chairs the panel giving the grants. And David's one of the unsung heroes, a volunteer giving his time year and year after the charity. And we value people like David and the other supporters or volunteers with them. Well, our Tesco charity of the Apology raised in the first two years, 5.2 million pounds. And we've got some money still coming through from the Tesco staff, so we're grateful for that. And that's helped more than 770 people. You know, these are fairly common statistics, aren't they? And behind the statistics are some human stories. And this slide here is difficult to see, but what it is, it's a letter that came in to the office, out of the blue. At the top, every cloud has a silver lining. Top of the bottom, every cloud has a silver lining. And the cloud is in the diagnosis we have said for a muscular dystrophy. And the silver lining, Benedict's mum says here, is a shiny red triangle. Now how fabulous is that? But we make that difference in all of our friends and uh, to that family. Marvellous stuff. And so these are the kind of human stories that I think are the part of what we do. But as we look forward, I think I can echo no point in January, but I'll work around the Olympics and the Paralympics. The trailblazers are, are already involved in discussions about improving access to the, to the Olympic sites as the hotels have been promoted as Olympic hotels. And they've met Baroness Tanny Gray Thompson, a fabulous athlete, at many gold medals for wheelchair racing. And they'll show up at a meeting with Paralympics charity. We've got an idea that we'd like to be seen as the main public supporters of the UK hockey team. As well as Jane, there are, there are five people who have dystrophy in the doctor's so seats. Why wouldn't we get right behind them? As well as Jane, there are other torchbearers chosen around the country. So they are moving into these open and public roles, which are so important. At least one trailblazer is now a formal ambassador uh, for the Olympics. We heard from James that we don't have any government funding for the charity, therefore we, we rely or volunteer support for our fabulous branches and the fundraising groups, and groups like 3023, fabulous support. And of course, there are different ways of engaging which James identified. And so, I would thank you for all that all of you here do for us. Most of all of you are fabulous fundraisers for us. Some of you have been fundraising for 30, 40, even 50 years. And uh, from the charity and from all people of muscular dystrophy, thank you very much indeed. And the intention is, the intention is that we're going to win this fight. And that happens all the messages we take back from the conference today. Let me now start to, to look forward a little. And you've heard that we set up the parliamentary groups in each of the three developed countries, and at Westminster too. We've got some fabulous parliamentary support. But more important than that, what I think we're doing really effectively as a charity, we're giving people a voice and a platform. So there's young people from the trailblazers, young parents like Jane, like Philippa, people living the condition themselves, going to these parliaments, these assemblies, and making their case themselves. It's very hard if you're a politician with any kind of compassion, and most of them do have that compassion. It's very difficult to say no to a man, to say no to a person with a condition. They're simply asking for their rights. Whereas to get a policy brief or a policy paper from a politician, yes, we'll put it with the rest to be read. But when somebody challenges you publicly, what are you going to do for my son, for my daughter, about my care, about my access, is very difficult. But of course, being used to media too. If I say use, we've got some super media supporters, and I'm really grateful for that. And what we can put, again, and give people the platform, the opportunity to put their voice directly uh, into the media, to reach out to wider audience. It's so important. 
As I move through to my conclusion today, I wanted to underline the, the two areas of real progress, quite outstanding progress in my view. First will be research, where Louisa, I think, gave a super presentation highlighting where we are now with clinical trials and the road forward. And we saw, didn't we, it's not a straight road. It's a road of twists and turns. So where there's promise and potential, there may be another barrier ahead. But the scientists do some amazing work, and we're not pleased to have funded them for more than 50 years now. We're starting after all to research charity to beat Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And that fight is going forward, not just Duchenne, but other forms as well. But of course, I don't know how senior scientists feel now, but at this point where clinical trials with real potential are underway. And that's one of the most exciting times of the careers of these scientists. And we know that the younger scientists today, that we are funding, we're supporting, will take this work forward. And again, there's real confidence, I think, that will win this fight. It's not just about looking for effective treatments and cures, it's about support for people living with the conditions today. But of course, there have been, and there are, some committed, excellent clinicians, some first-class doctors, kind of first-class work. But they're too rare. The conditions are rare. These are pockets of excellence. We need to get a much more consistent neuromuscular service right across the UK. And you've heard that the National Neuromuscular Plan is now being prepared by the NHS, region by region, with a national plan together, meeting the issues that the Walton Report identified needed to be addressed. And on that side, there is the NHS National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence, NICE. And their job is to recommend standards of care. In the past six months, we've secured recognition by NICE for the Duchenne Accredited Evidence Standards. In other words, the first time, NICE is now laying down standards for clinical care for Duchenne based on a consensus document with many, many doctors in this country across the world putting it together. It's a huge step forward. And with that, as the national plan, support for care advisors and new investment, I think, says we're making significant progress. But we're still impatient. It's never quite enough, is it? But how will this be funded? How can the NHS invest more at a time when funds are tight and funds are short? But this report, which uh, was launched in Parliament in May of this year, shows part of the answer to that conundrum. But what it says is that if you invest in services, what you will get will be a reduction in emergency admissions. So blue light, frightening, terrifying emergency, a respiratory crisis, a cardiac problem, or a fall. So you invest to save, to prevent. You have short hospital stays, more knowledge in the hospital about the conditions, better support at home from early, earlier uh, release, and more support than you're there. Cardiac and respiratory focus, we know it's vital. Support of transition, too, for younger people. Region 17 and 18 for other pediatric services into what can often be an abyss at that point. And that's the way to extend life, too, as well as improving the quality of life and saving money. And the investment to save will not cost a huge amount. The savings are greater than the investment. There is a cost benefit analysis. Is the director of the specialised portion of NHS, the NHS director herself, said, I accept the findings in this report in this report. It's said it in Parliament, it involves to have that commitment. If I am going to now draw my talk to a conclusion, I think what I'm going to take away from the morning is the inspiration of the speakers of people living with these conditions. And there is nothing more powerful for me and the team, the surf team, to be working with you and to hear at first hand what we should be doing better working with you to improve services, to take research forward, to get more information, to be in touch with you. And that's what we do. And here's a photo of the Wales Assembly. And that's Ray Thomas. And Ray sends apologies this year. He's not terribly well himself. But Ray has lost sadly two sons to Becca Muscular District. And Ray's t-shirt is a photo of uh, Nathan, his younger son. And Ray's word on the t-shirt is, the fight goes on. And that, to me and the team, is inspirational. And we do not forget. 
people like Ray. Do not forget that the speeches, the talks we've heard today, and we'll take that forward. <coughs> my final question would be, it's a rhetorical question, I don't answer. My final question would be this. We're a small charity, aren't we? We're a small charity. Not like the cancer charities, the heart charities, the young Parkinson's. These are rare and very rare conditions. Jane Blitz of Derby, together we are stronger, we can make a difference. But you know, there is increasing recognition, there is increasing recognition of the work this charity is doing and the needs of people with muscular dystrophy. So much so that we were the Charity Times awarded, we were awarded this fantastic honour of being the campaigning charity of the year 2011 by Charity Times. We won this just a couple of days ago. Philip of Farrell, trustee of ours, went up to collect the award. Philip has a son, Daniel, to do share with. Philip is an indefatigable campaigner for us. Muscle group chair, trustee, DFSG support group. Fantastic work done all around the country by volunteers. And it's fundraising, the research aid panel, muscle groups, campaigning. As the Chief Executive, I said at the start, and I'll say it again, I'm proud to be the Chief Executive of, the, Executive of the charity. Together we are stronger, and with your support, I'm determined we will win this fight. Thank you very much indeed. Robert, thank you so much, and I hope you agree with all of the trustees that we made a very good decision when we appointed Robert as your chief executive. You're doing a, a great job, Robert, so thanks for that. Um, what a good morning, I think, so far, if I'm allowed to say that. I have thoroughly enjoyed hearing from all of our speakers. There's lots more to come in the afternoon with the open syndicate sessions. You've got a choice of, um, I think there's about six different syndicates all on your program. You can rotate around them so you can see a couple of them at least. And there'll be, I think, relatively free flowing tea and coffee during the afternoon. So that is still to look forward to. Just before we break for the AGM and for lunch, let me make sure that I also cover off two other small but rather important points. One is, if you put your children into the crash, now's the time to take them out of the crash and do your best to get the same one that you put in, please, because it's, it's much simpler if it goes that way. We're, we're going to say shortly that you will have the option of either staying and, and sitting in on the AGM, which you're really welcome to do. Uh, it's not likely to be massively exciting. But I genuinely am very happy if, if the whole audience sits and sits through the brief AGM, which is a bit of a, a formal business that all charities have to go through just to uh, make sure they've covered the government. Um, but when you do go for 